Now, with just three days to go until the Edo State Governorship election, the race is heating up as candidates wrap up their final campaigns. Well, earlier today, several uh, sensitive materials arrived at Benin Airport, a key milestone in the preparation process. INEC, the electoral body, says everything is set for a smooth selection, with materials being distributed to polling units across the state. Well, Hamzat Lawal, election observer and founder, Connected Development, as well as Nobet Sochuku Dima, joins me now in the studio for more on the preparation of the Edo State Governorship election. Uh, Mr. So Sochuku Dima, thank you so much for being here. I understand you're from the APC, special advisor to the national chairman of the APC on local government affairs. affairs. Great. And Mr. Hamzat, you're looking very different in this outfit. Is this a celebratory outfit? Yes, it is. From it is Kogi my, State? Yes, my local. What are we celebrating in Kogi today? We're celebrating being alive and having peace. Great. I love the outfit. Oh, so let's you. get to Edo State, gentlemen. I'd like to begin with you as an election observer. Um, have you been to Edo State in, in recent times ahead of this election? What have you seen on ground? Uh, because the reports are that, you know, the temperature is high. We saw last week the PDP refusing to sign a peace accord. Uh, a couple of arrests being made in the state. What do you make of everything going on? So we've deployed our pre-election observers. We're monitoring um, this pre-election activities on the ground, mm -hmm. what political actors are doing, what they're saying, how what they're saying is instigating their supporters and creating tension that we've observed. Uh, we're also monitoring what security agencies are doing, flagging them in cases where we need to flag them on. We're also monitoring what INEC is doing, how movement of materials, training of personnel, mm -hmm. and any last minute uh, changes or hiccups around their logistics. So yes, we're observing, we're monitoring, and also we've seen increase in propaganda, fake news, misinformation, and disinformation mm. uh, in Edo State and, and what's happening online and the trends and some of the narrative being pushed uh, by influencers. So we're, we're monitoring, we're observing, and we're trying to counter some of this and ensure that the people of Edo are better informed mm -hmm. uh, to cast their ballots on Saturday. I'll come back to you for more on that um, because I didn't hear a mention of the political parties and I wonder to what extent are they playing a role in what we're seeing playing out ahead of the election. But let me come to you, Mr. Sochuku I love that name. Um, there have been claims and counterclaims. Uh, the PDP, which is the governing party in the state, has made several allegations against your party, the APC, accusing you of um, using the police uh, to harass and intimidate, arrest indiscriminately, um, in Gestapo style sometimes, their uh, party members and taking them to uh, the, the capital, Abuja, all the way from Edo State. Mm. Your party is accused of wanting to use federal might to rig this election. A serious accusation, and it's been on for a while. How are you responding to this? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, apart from the fact that I'm uh, SSA to the National Chairman of APC on Local Government Affairs, I'm also the National Chairman and uh, National Secretary mm -hmm. Forum of the 774 APC Party Chairman in Nigeria. So as I speak to you, I will be speaking from informed point of view. We'll have our men, all my colleagues are on ground. Now, what is playing out in Edo from Governor Obaseki and PDP? There are two uh, scenarios or th two things are suggested. One is that um, the governor, Governor Obaseki and PDP, mm -hmm. smell heavy defeat come Saturday by the special grace of God. And the second one is that what they are accusing APC of doing mm -hmm. is what he may have in mind to do. So springing that up is to cause diversion so that people's minds are put elsewhere and he does what he plans to do. Mm -hmm. The truth is this. There are, I, as I was coming, I listened to Channels TV mm -hmm. where the uh, um, uh, PRO of the police was asked several questions concerning those that are being arrested and the crime that they committed. That is for the police to do. Us as party is that we're 100% sure, we have this implicit confidence that a do state by the special grace of God, APC is on ground. And I can give you instances. The candidate of APC, Senator Monde, is a serving senator mm -hmm. who won the Edo Central in the 2023 election. 
and the, his running mate, the deputy governorship candidate, uh, Right Honorable Dennis Idahosa, yeah. is also a serving House of Rep member. He won in 2019 and was re-elected la last year, 2023, mm -hmm. Ovia uh, Southwest and Ovia Northeast. So those local governments are already taken. Yeah. And, the, and please, the leader of the party in the state, former governor, two-time governor, mm -hmm. and former national chairman of APC, yeah. Senator Adams Oshomole, has always delivered a donut where he's from to APC. And you know that the current deputy... But there are a lot the, of dynamics to this election that is different from... Please, I wish you could let me drive this point Very on. quickly, because we are... Uh, yes, yes. The, the deputy governor of Edo State, as of today, by law, mm -hmm. is an APC man. And in the same senatorial big street. So as we speak, going to this election, mm -hmm. we already have Edo Central. And we have Edo North. So mm -hmm. it's Edo South, where you have the Labour Party man, mm -hmm. and that... The APC, Labour Party, and the PDP are just yes. going to battle. So, and it's a, it's a win win for Mr. us. Mr. Som so Chukudima, um, the other political parties will also make calculations for you as to how they are going to get their numbers. And some will even make a case for how Senator Monde Opobolo won the election as a result of the internal crisis with the PDP. But we'll come back to that. And I wanted you to respond when he says confidently his party would win. We do not expect any party to say they're going to lose the upcoming election. But I know some of the propaganda that is hitting up the policy in Edo State. Could you speak about propaganda? Oh, yes. Um, first, it is the over 2 million registered voters with their permanent voters card that will determine who becomes victorious in the elections in Edo State. Indeed. And I think it's also important that at this point, politicians should not interfere in the constitutional mandate of the Independent National Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. INEC. And so when you look at the propaganda, um, particularly online, they're sending messages around misinformation and disinformation targeted at candidates, their political party, and even their family members. Mm -hmm. And most of this propaganda, they, they, they bit personal. And I would not want to amplify that. But for us, what we're doing is working with fact checkers yes. to help fact check this information and also ensure we're able to counter that narrative as civil society, mm -hmm. amplify them, and ensure they're targetedly reaching the people of Edo. So they're better informed, they're aware, and they come out in mass. And I think also it's important to say that I'm happy that the security agencies have deployed personnel, particularly the Nigerian police, uh, because for we to get a peaceful election yes. where it's transparent and no interference, the security agencies must be on ground, must ensure that political parties and their agents do not interfere with uh, INEC ad hoc staff on the ground. Because I also know that INEC have trained a lot of them mm -hmm. recently, and they're only just doing refresher courses as we speak. So it's important that political parties, because right now we've seen desperation. Mm -hmm. you know, And yes, like you say, everybody is beating their chest that they would uh, become victorious. I think it's important to also understand that they're going there to serve. Yeah. It shouldn't be uh, about uh, personal aggrandizement or even ego. This is about service to humanity. This is about service to the people of Edo State. So there's no need for anyone to become desperate because mm -hmm. desperation would now make people wanting to interfere and would escalate and, and uh, you know, bring this heated debate and even violence. And we don't want recurrence of any form of violence. We want Edo's election to be peaceful, mm -hmm. transparent, and accountable so that we can start to rebuild back trust in public institutions and the citizens, and particularly in yeah. Edo's at this point, enjoying the dividends of democracy. It is their right okay. to go and cast their ballot on Saturday. And for us as civil society, we're there to protect that right and observe to bring back real uh, uh, real-time information what's happening on the ground. And I would be on the ground like you asked earlier. Indeed. Um, I looked at the numbers that brought in the last administration, the outgoing administration, and the numbers are appalling, where you have a little bit over 300,000 bringing in the governor, and the closest one up is having a little bit above 200,000 out of over millions who registered to vote. So there's always been apathy in our elections, including a dual state and off-cycle election. I'll come back to you. Mr. Som Chukudima, um, how do you really allay the fears of federal might of intimidation and harassment. And I ask you because there are those who say this election is much more a by proxy war between big wigs across the party lines. For your party, they say, in fact, the president should have a stake because uh, if you recall, as ACN, Edo was like the launch pad uh, of 
the current president then beyond the Southwest. Uh, there are those who also say, we recall what happened in the last election, Edono be Lagos. Uh, the, the president was involved in that as well. Uh, for the PDP, they will say Atiku Abubakar, uh, the PDP uh, lost um, the presidential election in Edo State. Uh, for the Labour Party, they say Peter Obi made a, uh, a forceful show, a big show, winning over 50% of that election in the presidential election, that's Edo State. So uh, some say this is a proxy war of the big uh, Whigs in this party. So how do you really allay the first that this is beyond Monday of Pueblo, and it's not a Adam Sushomole, it is not a President Bola Chinubu that is, you know, even though they are not on the tickets. How do you allay those fears? It's all right. Thank you very much. I will start by saying that uh, our father, the father of the nation, President Bola Chinubu, is very busy with governance providing leadership for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So having time to talk about federal might is not something we should worry about. Besides, you can only think about federal might in an election you're not sure of winning. I've just given you a simple analysis. It is as simple as I've said it. We have two serving senators in that state. We have about nine House of Rep members, about nine House of Assembly members. We are on ground, fully on ground. If you are on ground, why do you need a federal might? Why do you need an external force? Like my brother said, when he was talking about, talked about propaganda. Mm -hmm. All that issue of federal might and not federal might is propaganda. Mm -hmm. And again, to create an impression or whip of sentiment that when eventually our victory against PDP in a do state mm -hmm. comes, they would like to say it was rig rigged or something of that nature. But what I'm telling you, my dear sister, and the uh, people of Edo State who are listening to me, or Nigerians, do not be afraid. Great. On that day, mm -hmm. go and vote for okay. that person who you desire. But APC is fully on ground, on ground. ready, we've, we've prepared, Great. and we are coasting to victory. Mr. Hamza, you have about 40 seconds here. Uh, are there concerns about voter apathy uh, come Saturday? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I think that people would come out, people of Edo State would come out and mass to cast their ballot. Mm -hmm. And if you look at even the engagement on the ground, and if you, from the feedback we're getting on the ground, people are really excited about the election. I know, like they say, they don't know they carry last. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Well, it's been an interesting conversation. I, hope, I wish we had more time. Perhaps we'll do this again before the elections or on the day of the election. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Hamza Lawal and Nobat Sochukudima. Thank you. And I want that out. Thank you for having Thank you. Right. Well, that's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching.